While everyone's waiting for Expo 2 ship a first version of React Native Server Components, a new tool is rising up that promises React Native Server Defined Rendering. What's the difference here and could this potentially be a new way to build our app? Let's check it out and have some fun. So the tool we're looking at today is called Rise. You can find it at rise.tools. It was created by Mike, who is of course the founder of Callstake, and also by Eric Vicenti, who is also the creator of React Navigation. Uh, let's take a closer look. Server defined rendering for React Native, the server kit and playground or bring your own. That H2 is probably not the best because it gives me absolutely no idea what this is about. We're gonna create our app pretty soon. You can run that command or in the future it might look different because this is a really, really, really early version of a tool. There are different tools included in Rise. Uh, Tamagui sticks out as the UI, but also packages like linking or haptics are included and even navigation and forms, which might be one of the coolest things. Um, this is just an image, I can't do anything with it, which is kind of confusing. Uh, we're gonna get into that code. There is a playground app that you should definitely download to get a quick start and a cool image about actions and events. Not a whole lot more, so let's get started. How does all of this work? Well, first of all, you can create a server using the Rise package. Uh, once you are in that server, which I am not here, but here, you can run npm run dev to bring up that server, which at the same time brings up a nice QR code. Don't mind the uh, simulator here yet. Uh, let's just try this and use our phones. So with the playground installed, I'm gonna get the QR code and I will open this up in Rise. So I've previously used this app. Uh, and we see hello world. What an impressive start. Now, <laughs> What is going on and why is this so cool? Well, the cool thing is that this hello world in the app comes from our server. So the server defines this. You can see uh, it's using a Y stack. So it's using Tamagui under the hood, but I can now change this to whatever, hit save, and this will update in the application. And same like this, we can now create the whole UI, including some actions and events on the server side in this Rise server. How does it work? Well, the server isn't doing that much actually. It just creates a server with a WebSocket connection using our predefined models and a specific port. The application will then connect to that port and if you use the playground app, everything's kinda hidden because you don't know it. But you can also use the Rise mobile quick start repository. I think this should be described here in the documentation pretty soon. So either option one, use the playground or option two, use the React Native quick start. You then install the dependencies, you do an expo dev build and deploy this. And that's actually what I did here on the right hand side in my simulator. Um, this is the Rise Mobile Quick Start app. Now, basically what's going on is that you have one Rise component for which you define a model source and components. We don't even have to talk about actions yet. This means we have for the model source, the place where we load our models from. In our case, our local server, but that in the, in the future could of course be anywhere. Then we have some component definitions because the application, the React Native app still needs to know about these components and that they exist. You are basically then feeding the structure from the server to your application and telling the app what to render. We do this based on the path. So in this case, the path is set to home uh, and on my server, uh, let's see, on the server we had a different path, right? Uh, let's check it out. We need to go to the models. Yeah, let's set this one to home. If we set this to home uh, and reload my app, yeah, we see hello, change this to whatever. So this gives us a glimpse at how it works. So in the playground app, it will also use this. Also, it has some cool stuff going on, like for every page, uh, it's using the expo router, you can see it's catching the slug. So pretty much like the ID and then renders the component for that specific path. On top of that, there are some actions that you can use. Uh, I don't want to dive too deep into this, but this just means that the server can, for example, after sending out a form, 
uh, reply with an action and then the client can simply execute that action. Now let's hit save here again and let's go into the server and do a bit of coding. Uh, does it actually now work on both ends? That's pretty pretty wild. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm confused with two edit uh, two views. I never did this before. So we can now do all of this on the server, as I said. And there's a cool example about using uh, some sort of navigation. Maybe let's just bring in a new file. I will call this nav. And within that file, we have another dependency to RiseKit Expo Router. So you might have to install that. Uh, npm install. There are a few packages that are automatically installed and a few that need to be installed. Also, there's by default no React, so you need to install the Rise tool to React package. And then you can just run npm run dev again, which brings up the application. Cool. Now, with this nav file, we see we define a home and a details page. From home, we can use the navigate action uh, to go to a details page and maybe at some point also something to go to a form. And on the details page, we would see this with the go back action, which is triggered on button press. Um, to include these two in our application, let's quickly change this. I will change this back to what it was initially. And then here, uh, I will not only bring in the models, uh, I will also bring in my navigation example and then pass this with some spread here. Models, everything from models and everything from my navigation example. So at this point, uh, the server has defined, where is it? The navigation for home and details. So if I now set my rice component to home, which I've already done here on the right hand side in the application that we just used, we see I got go to details, I got home from server, home from nav example, I can change this, uh, of course use other stuff. And with go to details, I should be able to go to the details normally. Uh, let's quickly do a refresh of the quick start application. Uh, sometimes it's getting a bit confused and voila, it's of course not working because we haven't included the actions. Oh, I trolled myself so hard on this one. Uh, this could likely have taken me a very long time. So let's see. <laughs> and you see, once we include the right actions, we are also able to use it. So we're now using navigation, which is defined by the server and works through actions in the React Native application. Probably even more impressive is once we talk about forms. So let me bring in this simple form that I added. Once again, we have a Y stack and we now have a rice form and on submit we do something. And this is interesting because this on submit will now run on the server, but we can still return a response which says, okay, please do a toast and then go back on the client. So let's see, I wanna include this as well. Therefore, I would go to my server file. I would import forms from form and I would include it in here as well. And I could now just throw in a new forms uh, component in my application or we've already done this. So by the navigation, I should be able to go to my form. Exactly. So here we go. What is your name? Uh, Simon. And at the same time, I will bring up my locks here. Once I hit submit, uh, <laughs> okay, this is what happened to me actually a couple of times, but that's not on Rise, that's more on me and my Node versions. I switched out some Node versions and now everything goes to trash. However, if you are fancy, if you feel like this could potentially be something cool, the first thing I recommend is that you read through the documentation. It's not that long. Just go here through the options of how you set it up, how you can use navigation. There's a description of the different tools of how you can use React, how the server works with models uh, and the server package. And then for Kit, there's a reference because they provide the Rise Kit library of components. Uh, but of course, in the future, you could build your own library of components and actions and, and whatnot and the, the preferred UI framework you want to use and the navigation and everything. Highly recommend you just quickly read through that. And also there's another section up here called guides, which I found after trying everything for a couple of hours. So go through this as well, because this also 
uh, details more about actions, events and how everything in RISE plays together. Once you've done all of that, I highly recommend you simply clone the RISE tools repository, which I did. It's a bit confusing, so I set up this workspace file to make it easier to navigate around in the project. It includes a mobile expo application. Um, we have the project root, which is basically everything. And it has a pretty cool server with some dummy stuff. So this is a bit more challenging to get into what's going on, but there are like three examples of UI controls and inventory and it follows the same setup. It defines these models, which are then consumed by the application. For example, if you then want to see what's going on in the form, you could just go in a server into this form and see what's happening here. But there's even more, there's a draggable list, there's like a bottom sheet component, there's a lot going on. So highly recommend you check out the RISE tools repository. Now, with all that being said, why should you actually use RISE? Well, first of all, be careful, it's very early days. Second, there's a document about RISE use cases. So for example, for electron applications, A-B testing, feature flags, media streaming, notifications, or live control because we have our WebSocket connection, uh, RISE tools could in the future make sense. And I would love to know, what are your thoughts on RISE? Your first impression? I'm definitely always overly excited, especially if I can like do something that's uh, that's like new, that's that I couldn't do before. I know how to create a React Native application, but doing the server part with server-defined controls and components, that's actually kind of fancy and opens up a whole gate and like new ideas and possibilities to me. Let me know in the comments. Have you tried RISE? What are your thoughts? Uh, would you use it in the future? I would love to see it. And of course, I just want to put it out there that this is different from React Server Components. So you've seen examples from Evan Bacon about React Server Components and they basically stream the whole component from the server back to your application. With RISE, it's a bit different. It's more like a JSON object is streamed through the socket to your React Native application, telling it what to render. Tiny difference there, but nonetheless, super interesting and super helpful. If you're still also looking for different ways to build your React Native application, I did a video a couple of weeks ago about all the ways local build, EAS, Expo, Xcode Studio, Android Studio, <laughs> check it out. It's super interesting. And after that video, you shouldn't have any questions about doing a dev client anymore. Thanks to Mike and Eric again for putting out this cool tool, early days. Talk to them in Discord if you got questions or leave a comment. I'm pretty sure they will check it out. And of course, subscribe and like, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.